All right, welcome back everybody. We're up to part seven of my doorbell. Uh, I've got a little bit down here. Molly, she's at the laying on my feet. She likes to curl up and, and lay on your feet, so I got to be careful I don't roll over her. Uh, we're pretty much uh, at a standstill right now until I, I get this figured out, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in this in this video. Uh, I, I I'm at the point where I got to paint parts, put it together so I can paint parts, if that makes sense. Um, we're going to be discussing these wheels again like I did last week and I finally came up with a setup of what I'm going to do and, and how I'm going to do it. Because you watch a lot of videos on, on YouTube of guys building models and they don't take the time to tell you uh, how, they're, how they're setting up to paint things. And they, one minute you show them assembling a model, next thing you know they're, they're painting it and it's done. But there's the, you got to plan it out. There's a strategy to painting your model. And I'm going to show you what I have to go through in order to do this. I have to get this planned out. I'm, I'm looking steps ahead in order to do this painting. So it, it'll make sense as we go along here in, in this video. But... Uh, in my last video I put up about the wheels, uh, I got a couple comments from a couple guys on, on, on what to do on them. And the one guy suggested I get something, and I, I did. I went out and bought it, and I'm not going to show it to you. It's probably going to be in another video or two. When I get to that point on the wheels, I'll show you what I got. And it, it's, it looks pretty sharp. It, it's pretty neat. So, uh, yeah, I did take the advice of, of a couple of my viewers. Uh, I got a couple comments on that, and I, I went out and got this one thing, and it's, it's going to be pretty sharp, I hope, when we get there. All right, so enough of me talking. Uh, like I said, I did get uh, quite a few pieces put together, but then I had to stop because i got to get these wheels done. And I, I, I pretty much got it all planned out in this video of what we're going to do. So uh, let's uh, get the camera turned around and get into it. Okay, where to start? <laughs> I've lost some sleep over this. But uh, first we're going to talk about this paint I bought. Okay, i got dust everywhere. Uh, this Vallejo paint that I bought. Now I've watched a lot of guys on the internet and a lot of guys use it and they like it. So I thought, well, I'll try it. Well, when I ordered it, I didn't know it came two different ways. Like I said, this is my first uh, use of the airbrush. Uh, and what I ordered was model color. All right? And I got to turn the lens up. One of these days I'm going to learn to keep this thing turned around. So what I bought was Vallejo's model color. Well, it also comes in model air. And what's the difference? Model air, you can pretty much spray right out of one of these bottles. Model color is real thick. It has to be thinned. Okay. Uh, had I known that, yeah, I would have went ahead and bought the model air. But I didn't I wasn't sure of that at the time because a lot of guys don't tell you that. They just show you using it. They don't tell you that, well, I'm using model air, but it also comes in model color. So anyway, so I got back on the uh, internet, scale hobbyist again. Uh, you looked that up in the last video, you'll see uh, where I get where I'm getting this stuff from. And so I went ahead and ordered a bottle of airbrush thinner. Okay. Now you got to watch this because there's airbrush uh, retarder, airbrush improver, all kinds of stuff. So I went ahead and made sure I got the right thing, airbrush thinner. And from what I understand, it's three parts thinner, one part paint. But I got on the internet, you know, when I found out, well, I got to get thinner. So I got on the internet and I started looking, guys, making all these home brews, all their own thinners, you know, use this, use that. One guy says you can use uh, Tamiya's uh, X20 or whatever it's called. 
thinner. Another guy says, no, I didn't have good results with that. Finally, I was on a forum, and one guy said something that I have been preaching all along, and it just dawned on me, you know, hey, you know, he's right. Why are you people messing with all this stuff? Why don't you just buy what they make that is specially formulated for this type of paint? Because I understand this is a, kind of a unique paint, okay, with some of the pigments and stuff in it. And I thought, you know what, the guy's right. I ain't messing with all this, make my own. You know, one guy says use Windex, another guy says use that uh, Clear by Johnson & Johnson or Future, whatever you want to call it. The other guys are talking about alcohol. And, and I just said, you know what, I'm going to spend $9, I think it was, and got me 200 milliliters of this. Now, it, will it be enough? I don't know. I might just go ahead and order another bottle down the road. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. So when I ordered this, okay, I also decided, well, I might as well get some of their uh, primer. So I ordered four bottles of their gray primer. Okay. 70601. All right. So I ordered four bottles of that. And this one here, this thinner, is a 71161, if you can see that right there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick with their stuff. If I'm going to use it, I might as well use what they make for their product. Sure, it'd be a lot cheaper, you know, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm going to play it safe, all right? So, now, what I've been losing sleep over, painting these friggin' wheels. I've, I've pondered this and pondered this, how I'm going to paint these wheels. Because what I want to do to these wheels, and I've showed you this, I think, in the last video, okay, i got I got a primer them. I got to paint them the, the field gray and then I wanted to, to make them real shiny on on this part right here that rides on the rail and and then on this little lip here that rides up against the rail those two parts should be real nice and shiny and that's what I bought that all clad for and I thought how am I gonna do this all right and you say well just go ahead and paint them well that's better said than you know because here's the problem. Here's my little railroad cars, okay? This is some of them, all right? And you can see I got one half of the side glued on, all right? And this is where this little nub here in the front fits onto that like an axle, okay? Then you got another axle to the wheel. Alright, well here's here's the problem. If I paint this, because I can't put this together until these wheels go on. These wheels have to go on next before I can put this other side on. And the problem is, if I go ahead and assemble it like that, here it is. Now this, is, this half isn't glued, but here's the wheel sitting in there. Now I go to paint I can't get paint up inside here where these springs and, and things are at because now the wheels are in the way. It's, it would be so easy just to go ahead and put it all together and paint it, but you can't. And this is what a lot of guys don't show on their model building. And when they're showing you building models, they don't show you the preparation and the strategy that's goes into effect in order to do this painting okay they'll show you their model putting it together next thing you know it's painted well a lot of models you just paint the outside of it okay on this particular model you're not only going to paint the outside of it but you got to paint the inside of it so I have to figure this out what's going to be the easiest way for me to try and do this and I've come to the conclusion that I'm not going to be able to spray that all clad on here like I want it to. Because I was thinking, you know, well, how can I do that? 
Well, I was going to paint the wheel the field gray color like it's supposed to be. And then I figured, well, I'll just take a piece of tape set on there and trim around it. And then I could hold it and then paint that silver. All right, that's fine and dandy. But now when you go to put this all together, now you've got a silver wheel here. And now you start spraying this outside of this thing, you just ruined your silver. So what I'm going to do, and I, and I think this is what I, I've come up with. I'm, I'm still not 100% sure, but this is what I'm saying. Here's the wheels. Okay. At first I was going to try and stick them on the... Uh, where's my little pointer at? My little stick. Alright, at first I was going to try this. Put them on here. Of course I would have had to trim every one of these little sticks down to get them to fit on that axle there. And then I was going to paint the wheels. Now there's 80 of these. Alright, so that meant 80 little sticks sticking all sitting all around. And since I can't do that silver, well I thought, well let's paint the wheel now. Since this idea is gone, that, forget that. We're going to go ahead, I think, and glue these wheels together. Alright. And what I'm going to do is, I've got some of this tack. Alright. I think I got this at, and I shouldn't say it because I'm not allowed to shop there, but I, I think I got this at Walmart. Any kind of tack stuff, you can probably get it, pick it up at the hobby store. Alright. And you take a little piece of that. And if you can see this, I got a little piece stuck in that end. All right. And I also got a piece stuck in the other end. And then I got a toothpick there holding it. All right. And I can't turn it upside down because this wheel ain't glued together and it's going to fall apart. But I think that's what I'm going to do. Go ahead and set it up like this. Spray that wheel primer, get it all primer, and then spray it with my color. So then I'll have it ready to go onto the model. Okay, now that tack, like I said, where's my wheel? That tack is in that little hole there. All right, because if you go back and remember, right now, these wheels are sitting in here. And they're spinning. And I said, I don't want that. So I'm going to keep that from getting paint in it, that little uh, spot right there. I'm going to keep that from getting paint in it by putting that blue tack in there. And then when I go to put them together, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it together. This will be all painted then. Okay. I'll have the, all the inside painted with my color. And let me see, how was I going to do that? Then I'm, yeah, I'm going to have to paint the whole thing then. Then I can paint the whole thing as a unit, okay? Get it all painted. And then I can come along, since they spin, I can hand brush a silver color in there, trying to make it look shiny. I don't know. I might even go back to my aluminum tape. We'll see what happens when I get there. Then when I'm all done, when it's all said and done, everything's painted and the color is on it and everything, then I can come back in with, uh, I'll probably use this one here, this Tamiya cement. Okay, it's a little thicker. And I'll get in there and put a drop in there on that axle down inside there. And that will set up to where these wheels will not roll. Okay, because if you watch the last video, you see I do not want my wheels to roll. So this is the things you have to plan ahead. Here's another one, okay? I've got these, uh, these bridges here. They have to be painted, okay? Now you can see i got the photo etch on top of there, all right? I do not want to be painting this thing through that photo etch, let me get it off of here. 
trying to cover this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint this as it is because like I said these two parts don't go together completely they you know they, they sit around the edge it, it's gonna glue all the way around the edge a little dab of glue underneath the center here and underneath the center here but the rest of it is open okay I can almost you see that going through there that does not come together it's close I mean, it, I mean, it's it's within a hair of being there, but it, it's not. So I'm going to paint this here as a unit. And then I'm going to come along and put my photo etch on. And then spray that. Okay. Because I do not want, like I said, to be trying to cover this area in here all these this webbing with paint going through this photo etch and clogging up all these little uh, openings they got in it so there you know like I said you you got to plan this out you got to think ahead and, and you know there's parts that go on here um, one of these boxes goes on here so I'm gonna have to hold off on that until after I get that photo etch on there and then I can go ahead and paint that along with the photo etch. All right. So this is all kinds of, of stuff you have to plan out. And I've been losing sleep over, like I said, because of these wheels. All right. So that's why I've only got half of them put together. The other half are made, ready to go. But uh, I've got to... Um, Get these wheels painted first and get this inside of here I'll, I'll paint this inside of here primer it and and uh, paint it I'll have to tape this off and then I'll paint the inside of this okay so when it comes time the wheels will be painted this will all be painted on the inside and then I can throw it together and then paint the whole thing and then come back and do the edge of my wheels now, if you remember in the last video, I was talking about decals and how these cars here, and I don't know if the decals go on both sides, okay, or just one side. But as you can see here, when this goes together, I've got a nice little nice little seam line right down through here right where the decals go alright or they probably go right below that or right on top of it I'm not sure yet but there is a seam line there and when you glue it together some of that that thin cement runs out comes out on the outside and then all of a sudden you got a you got a seam line and you don't have a seam line because the glue welded the two pieces together so I had to go through and fix that and you can see here from all these I've done them all um, what I've done was I took some uh, <coughs> excuse me I've been using uh, I will be using I'd used another brand but I'll go back to this I remember I had this and this is some nice stuff it dries fast sands easy Tamaya white putty and uh, you just spread a little bit on that seam line because it's a pretty good fit it just it it is there though and you just spread a little bit of it on there sand it down and then I come along with this Primer Surfacer by Tamaya. Okay. And take a little brush and just go back over that seam line again. Make sure I got it filled in. And then sand it down again. And you can see there's no more seam line. Okay. So that's what I've been working on. That's what I've been messing with. 
because I can't put none of this stuff together. All this, uh, let me get the directions here. All this stuff here for the railroad coupling and all that that goes on here and this here and this. I can't put none of that on a set of ladder steps until I get this thing together. Then I can paint it all as a unit. Alright? So I got to get them wheels done first. I, I have to get on them. So I can, I mean this is, like I said, since I had all these parts prepped and ready to go, it, a piece of cake, man. You just, uh, first thing I put on was this little piece here, which is like an axle on the inside. And then I came along and put the springs in. And them springs are really nice. Their uh, detail here on some of these parts is really crisp and clean. But you see them springs, nice and neat. Well, you get this thing together, you see them springs, <laughs> you don't see them no more. <laughs> so, uh, and I was really happy with the way things were going together. I mean, th part, these little parts were fitting perfect, you know. I wasn't having no problems at all, you know, with, with assembling this stuff. And then I came to this thing here, this bridge, which I just showed you one. Alright, here's the bridge. If you can see this right here, this little white styrene thing, let me bring it up there to you. I had to make them. Okay, you see them? There's one there, one there, and two on the other side. Here's what they gave you. Alright, let me show you this here. There's theirs, and here's mine. Theirs wouldn't fit. It was about a millimeter too short. And I, and I ain't kidding you. I measured it. Theirs is about seven millimeters. Mine is eight. And it fits perfectly. And I just happen to have some of this styrene laying around. Like I said, I buy this stuff whenever I go to a hobby store. I'll pick up some styrene. And I just cut me out. I, I believe it's uh, three millimeters wide. Because I measured the slots. There's uh, there's little slots in here. I don't know if this is going to show up. But there's a little slot right there and there and there and there. And that has to fit into that little slot there. And the little slot on the bridge here. Okay, so there's two slots, and it holds it away from the plastic. It holds it away a little bit. I'd say maybe a half a millimeter or so. There's a sp uh, space back there, which looks nice. And this was pretty nice. It, it was kind of Art Deco, you know, with that curves in the side. Yeah, I could sit here and mess with it, but I thought, what, you know, I, this looks fine. You know, that looks fine to me just like that. I don't think anybody's going to sit there and pick this model apart because I didn't have them little curves in there on them pieces. But they won't fit. You know, I sat here and it took the time to trim them off of the sprue and trim them up and they wound up being a millimeter too short. Uh, I can't, but you can see they are too short because mine fit perfectly. Now, yeah, you're saying, well, I could have glued them onto the side of the thing. Well, that wouldn't have looked right. This, this looks better. All right. All right. And just when, like I said, I was saying how well their parts are all fitting together and everything's coming out just right. So, so there I am. This is where I'm at. Uh, I did go ahead, like I said, I skipped up to, uh, I believe, what are we on? We're on like step number four or something like that. And I skipped up to step 20 and went ahead and put these two pieces on here. All right. Like I said, I don't know why they didn't have me doing that. I'm putting this box on. Why not put that on? And there again, the box was a little confusing because 
in their plans on that box. Where's it at? Right here. They show like a little latch on that box. Well, I've got four of them and not a one of them's got like a little latch because that tells you what direction this box goes because these little pins here are not in the center. They're offset to the back. So I had to watch that, make sure I had that box on there right. All right, because mine have no little latch on them. Okay. So I got to get on this. Uh, been having a bad week. Well, not a bad week. I mean, I got yard work to do. I'm taking care of, you know, the wife wants to run. I got to watch the dog. She's curled up in a ball again over there on the, I brought her down a new uh, doggy bed. But, uh, yeah, I, I haven't been spending as much time down here as I should. And uh, the weather's really turning nice. We finally got some sun coming in. And uh, it's going to be in the high 70s today. So, oh yeah, photo etch. I wanted to show you that. So hold on a minute. Let me set up for that. Okay, here's the photo etch. And uh, I just showed this to you before. Goes on tops, on top of these uh, bridges. And let me tell you, like I said, this, I'm amazed. This is fitting perfect. I mean, it's, <laughs> there's no problem at all with the fits of any of these pieces so far. Except for them two, or them little white things. All right, now this photo etch came real, it packaged real nice. It was in this uh, plastic bag with this piece of cardboard, a piece of photo etch on this side, and this piece of photo etch on this side. So they, they packaged it up real nice. Now, I've showed it in a couple videos how I do this. And there's nothing to it. It's not rocket science. And this isn't real thick photo etch. I, I, I consider two types of photo etch out there. This here, pretty flimsy. And then there's some other stuff that, boy, you play hell trying to get it off these sprues. And if you can see here, I took this one off of this sprue. And you can see how they attach it with these little points. All right. Now, I know a lot of you guys say, I know how to work with well, fine, but there's a lot of guys out there that are, don't. Or they don't want to spend the money to buy it. But this came with the kit. So you have to take that up and, and get it apart. Now, this photo etch also came with a plastic backing on it. Okay, so you got to get this off. All right. They really took care in packaging this model. They really did. All right. So now you got that peeled off. And it was on both sides. Let me get rid of that. Now, what I use, and a lot of guys, everybody's got their own way of doing this. Some guys will buy a sheet of glass and work off of that. Uh, I use this right here. It's, uh, I believe I've measured this once before, six by six. I think that's what it is. Yeah, six by six. And it's just a tile. I went over to Lowe's or wherever you want to get one. Go in, rip up a piece of tile off your kitchen floor. Just you know, tell your wife, you don't, I don't know what happened. You got yourself a piece of tile, nice hard surface, because it really won't work on this. Because this is, even though this is nice and stiff and hard, it's got give to it. And your knife will dig into it, and if it does, it will bend this photo etch. So you want something hard, a nice hard surface. And all I do is take a number 11 blade, okay? Like I said, there's so many different ways to do this. I, this is the simplest I think there is. 
and I find one of them little attachment points and I just go along follow the edge of that uh, of what you're going to cut find that little attachment point and I just rock my knife back and forth right there it is it just came off okay go to the next one and rock that knife back and forth and if it doesn't come off you got to do it again that's why it pays to switch out your blades once in a while okay I just said it was simple as that there it is that one's off so let me go ahead and detach these and then I'll show you what I do from there <coughs> okay so I got that one piece of photo etch trimmed out of there and like I said that this stuff is pretty flimsy that this here is is the I think the thinner of the two photo etches that I have dealt with and uh, you have to be kind of careful make sure you got your fingers pressing down solid as you're cutting so you don't kink this stuff or bend it or anything else all right now you're done you got it cut off let me get my backing again here let me set this over here out of the way now you probably never see this but there are little nibs sticking up there where I cut it off at all right if you rain your finger down there you can feel it right there it's catching all right and those are sharp now best way to do this if it was a small piece is to hold it with a pair of uh, tweezers or a pair of uh, needle nose pliers that are don't have the ribs cut on they're the smooth kind you, you really want to get a hold of it nice and tight so you don't ruin this stuff but <clears throat> since this is so small and uh, this is that thinner stuff you see right well you can't see it but there's one right there all right now one of the best things to use is one of these little uh, diamond impregnated files all right that's what I used to use you can also use a sanding stick all right but you got to be careful with these because this will dig into it that little sharp piece will dig into that and it it will usually tear them up and if it's not that it'll catch it and you can bend it but like I said the wife went over to the Sally's beauty supply place and I showed this to you last time I believe it was and got this little sanding stone all right this thing I've already used it this works great all right now right there is that little nib and you can see I got my fingers right on either side of it so I don't bend this stuff and what I'm doing is just coming down coming down this thing all right and it's just about gone this thing works great takes that right off of there all right and if you notice I'm not going like this uh, we ain't in view I'm not going like this okay because that would have a tendency to bend this all right I'm coming at this angle let me do it again because I don't know if that was in view here's one right here I can feel it right there I can't I can't even see it but I can feel it all right I'm coming at an angle down this side. Or I can go both ways. Just don't go like this because this stuff is so flimsy and that's gone. Oh, there's another one. Alright. Pretty much I got the stone at a 45 degree angle to the thing and just sort of sand in the side of it you don't want to get too aggressive and, and lose some of your detail but this this works great this little sanding stone she bought me if it wasn't this I would definitely be doing this same thing just come at an angle with it all right so I got the other side to do too so that's all there is to photo etch 
Uh, it's no big deal with it. And this is some nice stuff. I don't know if you can see the detail in that. Catch it where the light ain't hitting it. Let me move it around a little bit. That is some really nice looking photo etch. All right. When it comes time to gluing this down, I'll show you what I use. All right. And once again, there's <laughs> half a dozen ways to do it. All right. So that's it for this part right now. If I got more time or I got something else going on here, uh, I'll be back. But as, you, as I said, you know, you can see I'm, I'm starting to get some of this together, but I, I have to plan for the painting. I have to figure all this out. Um, and, and that's almost sometimes as hard as building a model because you think, you know, uh, you know, how am I going to do this? Because here's another part. Um, these these big the, the big bridge that goes in the center where the gun sits on top and once again here we go they're showing you the right side up and then in the next photo it's upside down and it get you got, you know you got to really pay attention why couldn't they just turn this around and have it right side up to show you them parts I you know so you have to watch that they they got a bad habit of doing that in this. Uh, on a lot of these parts. One minute it's the right side up, next minute it's upside down. But uh, yeah, these two halves will go together with a, like a box in between them. So there again, you know, you're going to be painting the inside of this and if you went ahead and put this together with them two boxes, you're going to have trouble getting in there. So you, you got to plan ahead with this painting. And, and that's the thing. I don't see a lot of guys on YouTube talking about uh, preparing for their paint job. Sure, they'll show you the uh, primer and, and, and paint and wipe it down and all this and that, but what's the process? What's the steps you have to go through to get there? And let me tell you something. Talk about YouTube. I was watching uh, a TV show. It just happened to be surf, channel surfing. And they had the CEO of YouTube, uh, some woman, on this news channel. And they were interviewing her. And one of the questions the guy asked her, he says, well, uh, how much time do people usually spend on YouTube? And she says, oh, usually around an hour. And I, I went, what? <laughs> an hour? <laughs> I'm, I'm usually on YouTube. When I go upstairs at night, I sit on the couch with the wife. She's on her Facebook talking to her friends. We got the TV on. We're watching something. And I'm on YouTube. I'm usually sometimes on YouTube four hours watching all kinds of stuff. Uh, I got guys that do machine shop work, uh, guys that build models, guys that build trains, train model sets, I, you know, and then once in a while I'll just go off and get on something crazy like a bulldozer stuck in the mud and what they got to go through to get that thing. I'm on YouTube constantly and she's telling me that the average time is an hour. Hell, I just put out an hour video the other day. I guess everybody's done for the week or whatever or the day. I don't know. I don't think they pay much attention to their uh, viewers and, and their people that are putting up videos. All right, I just thought that was kind of interesting. All right, that's enough for this uh, little segment. We'll see where we're at, and if I got more time on here, uh, we'll be back. If not, another week goes by. Yeah, look at this. Bring her down a new bed and look at her. Oh, am I bothering you? Huh? She's not too much into modeling, so Mama's out with her girlfriend. They're out running around shopping and going to restaurants and stuff, and I'm here. And I don't want to leave her upstairs by herself. Cause she's one of them type of dogs that she follows you from room to room. Look at her, though. Just, she ain't got a care in the world. But, so I thought I'd be nice and bring her down here with me. And what does she do? She leaves me a little treat. Yeah. I don't know what that's all about. 
I took her out before I brought her down here. She took a pee. She didn't poop until she got down here. She don't care. She knows I'll pick it up. <laughs>